And Urgot is banned off the table, too. It's funny you mention the Annie, too, because I know you're all about those level 2 power spikes and uh, the all-in potential that Kasing always brings. This time, Rocket aren't going to give the chance to him with a Thresh, so they take it away. We'll see what H2K answer back with. Yeah, Urgot's out. That, that gives Kalista a little more value in this meta. However, uh, Hyarnan is a really, really big Sivir player, so they actually wouldn't mind giving away Kal uh, Kalista, even though like it's really good against the Sivir. They just want to lock the Sivir, I feel. So let's see if Rocket respects that or has a way to deal with that. Kalista traditionally is very good against Sivir, but H2K has, has a way of finding the, the good lane swaps to match that. Um, LeBlanc taken out by Rocket here too, respecting Ryu uh, for his play. Absolutely. And, and of course, Dizir's been off the table as well. Uh, H2K, they send the rotation on back with an Alistair ban away from Bander. Rocket's got one left on the board. What do they spend it on? Cassiopeia maybe. You know, Cassiopeia first pick could be big for H2K. Good control mage, and uh, it's really, really strong in an objective both focused team. I think that may be the case. I'm really, really curious, but Rocket's taking a lot of time about this one. All junglers are still up This is a little uncertain, yeah. I mean, they, they leave the possibility of the Sejuani, Gragas early pick, Rek'Sai possibly if they want to go for that. I mean, there's a lot of strong picks up. It's a Maokai wow, okay. band away. All right. So they spend that on Oda Wamne. Now, this is curious. No, Oda Wamne is, is a big Maokai player. They, the way H2K plays is they play with a safe tank in the top lane that can TP down and basically assist once those dragon fights start happening, once those fights in the bot lane start happening. And Odoana plays a really good Maokai, so I understand the ban. Potentially behind the scenes, we don't know Steve's champions pool, right? He may have a no counter pick ready, or wants to force Odoana in a predictable matchup, come out with a, with a bit of a curveball, you know, all possible. Maybe they want to just facilitate Steve's first game in the LCS here. Mm -hmm. A lot of options, but we know Cassiopeia is open. Alongside all the junglers, is H2K going to pick it up? Yeah, that is definitely the question. I think H2K really have to decide what they want to prioritize here with, with so many different strong picks available. You would think jungle would be pro would be our number one priority, but as you mentioned, the Kalista, it was left open throughout it. You said it has a lot of value in this. I, I completely agree. And I think it, it's a little risky to pick up first, but it shows the confidence they have against Rocket. Well, it, it is pretty smart given that Urgot's out and they play this baby this rock, paper, scissor equation where Kalista goes in and Sivir. Sivir can block a lot of Urgot's damage, you know, with blocking the, the Urgot E ability at the same time. So they, they ban one and then they pick pick the other. And that's really good here. They get the Kalista. Rocket can't really pick Sivir here unless Ula is very, very comfortable playing it. Um, but otherwise, the lane's going to be really rough. I like it. I just wonder where Cassiopeia fits in, because in other regions, she's has seen a lot of uh, pick and ban, really. But in Europe, not so much today. I've been wrong before, so maybe maybe I'm right for once. Well, looks like Rocket are going to go that way. So Cassiopeia is locked in, as is the Hecarim. And from Steve's summoner spells on that one, there's no chance that's going jungle. Yeah, TP Smite, Hecarim. Um, well, we'll see how it works. I think it's nerfed a little bit on this patch, you know, for top lane, so jungler Kinda wants to wants to run the smite top lane, not so much anymore. Hecarim's really good at flanking. Uh, really gonna watch out for those TP plays. You know, home guards coming in, really really vital. Could throw H2K off guard. Uh, Ryu's hovering Zed, even though he now has a one second like change on on, on his uh, ultimate ability. So I don't think he's gonna play that. Yeah, I don't think so either. But we'll we'll see as the hover timer does tick down uh, for Steve. On this Hecarim, I'm a little bit curious now why they banned the Malka. Yes, they don't want to put Odawamne on that comfortable choice. But in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, Hecarim doesn't do too badly against the Maokai, so I'm wondering if maybe Rocket are, are trying to sniff out a lane swap in advance. Yeah, maybe lane swap maybe just doesn't like playing against it. Maybe they have, they figured out that Oruana plays poorly into Hecarim when Maokai is out. They they have obviously done their research because they had a lot of time to prepare for this first match. Uh, we'll see what comes out. We have the Morgana picked up. Earlier, I would have said, you know, 100% support pick. It works well with Kalista, but I've been wrong when uh, Peke flexed it and went into mid lane. Mm. So we see Morgana flex. Solid jungler. Rek'Sai over Gragas is a bit surprising. I usually rated uh, Gragas a little higher than Rek'Sai personally, but uh, he looks knows best. Well, Kasing might be listening to you right now, Krepo, as uh, they hover over the bard. Yarnan still deciding what he wants for his AD carry. Well, uh, yeah, so Rocket, you know, Wolite goes ahead and takes Lucian. This is a far cry from what we saw in some of Rocket's uh, less successful games during last split, where he would go on a hyper carry and it would go to an hour or so, and it would be all down to getting caught once and then instantly the game is over. So this is a much safer choice. Lucian uh, should fit fairly well into this composition. There's a lot of mobility outside the Cassiopeia, and I like to see what Rocket can do with this one. Uh, Lucian, Lucian fits pretty much any composition. He lanes pretty much well into anything. I think it's a solid lane against the Kalista. Becomes more of a skill matchup, depends on the supports too. Uh, but we might not even see that lane with lane swaps potentially coming out, but the Fizz locked in. Yep. 
That is going to be Ryu's choice, and really? Yar, and excuse me, and uh, Odawamne has a Nar too. So this is a fairly favorable matchup in the top lane for H2K. Yeah, the Fizz is a little bit surprising given what uh, Ryu is going to be up against here. So they had an answer for the Cassiopeia all along, so I guess they wanted the bait rocket into picking it or just pick it late themselves mm. is an answer. What worries me about a team with really like a big objective focus like H2K is they don't have any wave clear, really. Like Usually you, you position well for objectives by controlling the waves into your favor, but Fizz it is going to be easily pushed in in the mid lane. Uh, yeah, Nar can control top pretty well, but so can Hecarim and TP down. Uh, almost equally efficient, if not more efficient than a Nar. Bot lane, very strong. Morgana uh, and Kalista, really nice combo. Even when you ulti the Morgana, for example, the tether will not break from her ultimate, so Kalista can actually replace Morgana in that equation. A uh, little nifty trick there. Let's see what Vander rounds out this composition with in the support role. Looks like it's going to be Lulu. As the timer ticks away, mm -hmm. That's peculiar. Hardly uh, a strange choice for him, but yeah, in general, I, I am a little bit weirded out, do you think, overall by this pick and ban phase? Maybe they uh, he felt that he lacked um, some tankiness on the team. Gragas being the only tank, uh, Hecarim definitely wants to build that Triforce. Lulu ulti can offer extra tank uh, tank ability to any character in the game, so in that sense, it's okay. He's a ranged laner, so it kind of works, because against Kalista Morgana, you definitely want to have the option to have double ranged. Elsie's going to get really tricky with the Kalista passive. Right, now now that we've seen the, both the compositions locked in, uh, what what do you expect to see out of this? What What is Rocket's game plan? What are they trying to do with these power spikes that pretty much happen all across the course of the game? I think we'll see uh, a Righteous Glory engage from Gragas, uh, Body Slam Flash combo with a Lulu ulti. That's the ideal scenario, right? You send them in, he knocks them up, knocks to some some people back, while Hecarim TP's on a flank and surprises them. And I think they, they want to get favorable fights by getting the minion waves in their control. H2K's comp is very weak on wave clear. Uh, they have to snowball. I think if H2K gets behind more than 2,000 gold, it will get really tricky. But they have a lot of surprising damage. Fizz does a lot of damage. Kalista is good at controlling those objectives. Has some, some a lot of nice hidden damage. You know, once that passive proc is on and Morgana auto attacks, once that's 12% of your maximum health gone, it can really change the pace of the game really quickly with a couple of those passive shots, but we'll see how this plays out. Absolutely. A lot of hidden damage on both sides. That smite on the Hecarim is especially going to be interesting for contesting those objectives. Now, guys, we're done with that pregame banter. Why don't you tell us what you think at LOL Esports is the place. Tweet H2K win or ROC win with the hashtags to see who you think is going to take this one as we load up onto the Rift. Let's see if any team has a cheese platter prepared or it's going to be the standard fan out uh, line of scrimmage. Well, it is the first game of the split. We don't see the most shenanigans traditionally, but there's one thing I've learned since coming here, Crepo. Tradition is anything but a good indicator. Yeah, I love me some cheese, though, but I don't think so. What I really like, actually, we've seen these lines, uh, lines of scrimmage. I like faking it by sending your top laner and your jungler to one side, basically telling our team, yeah, yeah, we're just spreading out, but then collapsing with the other three members on one side to force a warden. And it looks like um, the bot lane's actually doing that exact same thing. Kasing backing up Yarn here, hoping that Vander's on a position. They want to force them out, but yeah, 2v2, it's not going to work. They need support of the mid laner. Um, Fizz obviously doesn't put too much pressure, so that's not really going to work. Standard line of scrimmage, 105 wards drop. Um, this is basically, you want that ward down at 105 so you can comfortably do your camp and figure out whether the enemy is stopping you or you know whether coming to invade or whether they're doing their camp. And you want that ward up really quickly for a 3 minute, 3 10 timing. So that's why at 105 you put that ward down. Standard bot lane behavior. Both teams going to their camps. I think this kind of, it's hard to tell, but I think Kalista Morgana likes that level 2 spike uh, to just go all in and kill somebody. Well, we definitely know Kasing likes that. Um, that has just kind of been their hallmark. You, you mentioned it earlier that H2K is a team who will pretty much do what you expect them to do. And as an enemy team, you'd think that makes it easier to predict, but it just hasn't been the case. All right, I want to watch how they do these golems, if we can keep the camera on that, because there's a certain science to it by spreading out your, your passive you know, damage on one big golem, then to the small one, then to the big one again. Let's see if they do the, the perfect PvE style. So they, they buck the big one, they buck the small one. Look, they go back to the... Uh, I think they should go for the big one here and let the AoE take down a small one. This is nitty gritty Crepo whining about golems, but I think that's the way to do it. However, they take it down the camp relatively quickly. Lucian Lulu first on the grump. Let's see if there's a, a speed disparity coming down or not. Yep, we will see. Back into lane now. The level two on Kasing. Yarnan's still sitting on level one himself, so. Oh, he took full XP then. Yeah. Took more XP than Yarnan, hoping to basically push the lane and have the bind be a threat. 
Good dodge from White. Yeah, I was going to say, it's only a threat if you can actually land it. Because Sing's actually taking a lot more damage than he bargained for. Yarnan stepped forward and took a face full of Blue Lance as well. Really like to play the Binance down so the zone control is out. Yarnan's still level one. Really aggressive play and really solid play from Rocket. Really good reactionary play. They, they know what went down. They know that all the experience of the camp almost went to Kasing here. Whether it was by choice or by accident, they dodged the binding, immediately put on the aggro switch. Really good reactionary play and yeah, let's come to play. Oh yes he has. He's definitely got something to prove here. So serious CS lead to start this one off. Yarnin a little bit gimped by his CS differential. He just hits level two now. We'll see if he's able to tango with Woolite. And this matchup is all about pushing. Whoever pushes has the ability to poke. It's really hard to dodge a skill shot when you're getting pushed in because you can only dodge backward. Good bind there from Kasing because it limits the, the angles in which you can dodge, you know. If you're pushing, you can dodge forward, backward, and sideways, but they're fighting over the skull crab right here. Yeah, Yanko's uh, in a bit of a precarious situation, but he should be able to escape nice and easily, but Lulex has the Prey Seeker. No, nope, not quite up. He's not able to get it, so that one goes over to Yanko's. The Crab Wars are a very integral part of the early game crab. Yeah, that sure basically definitely that, helps to set up your wards. So you can, if you get the Skull Crab, it means you can actually put your ward in the tri -bush if you want. Good aggro from Wuite, and Yarn is forced to base really, really big here for Rocket. Yeah, that's really troubling. He's he's only able to pick up a long sword for all of his efforts, and now he's going to lose out on even more experience as Wuite Vander are pushing in this lane. So I really hope H2K have a backup plan right now, because their bot lane is not going Where to Where is Ryu going? He's going up top. This is going to be interesting. Let's see if he can bully out Steve. He hits level four, dives in, ignites immediately, taking tower shots as he playful tricksters into Steve, predicts it. Odoane tanking tower damage, and that's going to be first blood to Ryu. This was such a sick play, so sick that Odoane wasn't even ready for it. Ryu goes in, you know, gets a tower aggro, then hops up and playful and trickster, and he sees that Steve is moving out of the range, so he flashes while he's coming down from his pole and lands on top of Steve. Steve has no flash, so he can't counter flash. Beautiful play by Ryu, and this is how you punish somebody with TP Smite. You use the fact that he does not have a flash to your advantage, and somehow Ryu was allowed to push mid lane against the Cassiopeia. Not sure if that's supposed to happen. Yeah, not sure at all. He has been down a little bit of CS, but I mean, that's just because he was on that roam. He took a little bit of time, but absolutely worth it. He goes back, he gets himself a little bit extra items and extra Dorns, the, uh, the wards he's able to pick up for to grab some extra vision for himself. So. You know, we, we wondered about this Fizz pickup, but so far it's doing all right. Yeah, good deep wards here from Yankos. He comes in to support the mid lane. Basically, Nuketuck wants to push in this lane safely, or at least contest that CS without getting ganked. Vander groups up uh, with Yankos because they have the safety of the pink ward in the back, but they're uh, spotted by a Sentinel, so not much is going to happen here. Yeah. We were talking about Vision, too. I mean, that's that's a, a very valuable part of Callista's kit that I feel like is just is undervalued, or at least is understated. Just because you don't have to invest as much in wards, you can utilize the Sentinels. Yes, they give 10 gold to your opponent, but yeah, small price to pay. It is, but it's very, it's it gives vision, but it's very tricky to rely on it because people can walk around. I remember this one game where the enemy jungle dodged three different uh, Sentinels, invaded in the jungle, and basically punished the Kalista, feeling safe, false sense of security, got punished really hard for it. Spring in uh, in Korea, I believe, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Now, and, and that's an extraordinary circumstance, but you're right, it's not exactly a fail save. Now, Vander is able to dodge out the Dark Binding. He's, he's having a hard time hitting those today. Ooh, nice Darn dash in. He could be in some trouble. Woolite, not quite enough. The exhaust is on him. I feel like it's expensive down there. See, Woolite knows he is ahead. It's actually really smart. Didn't want to blow his heal or his flash because he knows if he flashes, he's only going to trade Yarn and flash for flash. And you don't want to do that when you're ahead because Yarn has to base anyways, you know? Save your flash, play a nice, like, just... Get that advantage snowballing and make sure you can't get closed on by Lulex later. Really solid play by Wulite and good decision making. These junglers seem to be fated to meet up at that river area. Lulex not getting the better of it so far as Ryu was coming in. Yanko's still confident that he can throw a few more barrels his way. My Rocket's playing very well at reaction there. You know, they see Lulex in the jungle, they react to it. They don't get caught by the bind. They know they see the bind, so they know uh, um, Kasing is not ready to follow up and protect his AD carry. Wulite uses that information to his advantage to dash in aggressively on Hyarnan. Solid team play, nice use of resources from Rocket. Very impressive compared to the former form. Absolutely. I mean, this is... It's very, very early to say, but compared to the performance we saw out of Rocket last split all the way up until the promotion tournament, it just... It was not something that would have been able to compete with H2K at the level they are at now. Even seven minutes early into the game, we'd, we'd have seen them falling behind. Uh, we'd have seen them not really knowing what to do. And they've so far been 
quite fine. Only giving up the one kill. Oduamne now into Meganar form, but Yankos is there. He can't really do much. This is ugly, though. If your jungler level 4 has to walk into the lane to secure a push out, it means you're in a bit of trouble, though. Oh, Oduamne going the aggressive. Wall. Yep, in comes Lulex. Gets the knockup, gets the kill. Oduamne gets himself another assist just as Meganar expires. And Steve starts his LCS career 0-2. I don't like this play. Just walk into the lane like it. You give all the information to your opponent. You're playing without a flash on this Hecarim and you just get punished so hard. Really, really good at H2K localizing the weakness of the Rocket roster and basically pinpointing it and exploiting it super hard. Yeah, sometimes it is the game of gang up on the newcomer. Steve has really been unable to do much about this to start off. They'll have to be very, very careful pushing forward, but you know, this could definitely prove a pain in Rocket's strategy later game because Singh eats half of a calling. As Yarnin just doing everything he can to try and push the wave out. Wu White's stuck on a pickaxe, even though he has a really big CS lead. That's a little awkward. You really, really want, once he starts snowballing this game, you really want to uh, base on a BF sword, but there's a 30 CS lead almost for Wu White. Yeah, and he's, he's still got about 300 gold or so before he can pick up that BF sword, so he's a little bit of a wonky spot right now, and he doesn't want to allow Yarnin to really get back into this one, so yeah, but he kind of a tough call. At the same time, Yarnin was forced to buy a Vampsifter, so he's going to be really far off any any notable spike. But the, the game is pretty much divided in half right now. The left side of the map is for H2K, and the bottom side of the map is for Rocket. However, we haven't seen a Dragon. Usually when you see this 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 bottom focus, like or bottom advantage on the map for one team, this translates to a Dragon. But Yankos was basically patching up, you know, Steve in the top lane. Didn't get a Dragon, but Steve still died, you know, and this is worrisome for Rocket right now. Yeah, it is, but uh, you know there there is that silver lining that they haven't really been able to secure a dragon. Uh, Yankos and Vander now roaming together to establish some vision down on that side. They throw a ward, discover the pink one, and they're able to clear out the Rek'Sai tunnels. Vander going very deep for just a second. He goes a little far to get a ward down. He knows really he has to a little bit up. normal, but yeah, it's 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 safe for them to do this right now because they know not much attention is being paid to this bot side outside of the two v two. I think we might see another roam from Rio soon. Has pushed in the mid lane, has the opportunity to at least disappear to the left. Knows there's a pink ward there. And basically just disappearing and, and making people afraid of a possible roam is something you could do. However, if Ryo goes top again, they will lose the dragon, so you might opt to stay in the mid lane. Now let's see. In the moment, Nuke Duck's uh, taking a brief break to pick up his blue buff. Nanko's helping him out with that one. Uh, but yeah, Ryo has done, has done pretty solid in this matchup so far in this Fizz. Uh, the really worrisome thing is, though, how long is this laning phase going to continue? Because that's only going to be better and better for Nuke Duck's Cassio. Yeah, he likes that. At the same time, Fizz does, does a remarkable amount of damage, especially once the game opens up and some towers disappear. He's a, a really good split pusher. Ryo went top. Let's see if uh, Rocket spots this or not. Decides not to dive because they don't want to give away the dive and trade for a dragon. I think Ryo bases picks up items and wants to start contesting the dragon. Right, you are. Goes ahead and gets his needless. Now, Lulex is going to be securing up some crab. This crab will be really big. Oh, actually, wait this. a minute. It's going straight towards... Oh, now it backs away. That's a very fickle crap. Yankos is going to go ahead and secure it. No problem whatsoever. Lulex got a little spooked on that. And as a result, Rocket, they're continually controlling vision in this dragon area, not letting H2K get any more of an edge. Yeah. They got an advantage on the bottom. Look at Wulai, 95 CS to 66. But what, how does that translate into the game? He's sitting on only a pickaxe. All this time, Galista was able to farm for free because Bam Scepter into pickaxe, you know, that's free, and they stopped their bases on the bot lane. Exactly. So this this could be a moment for H2K to actually strike. Because though, does take a serious amount of damage, but it would hurt a whole hell of a lot better if they had been able to back and grab some more items. Now you see Lulex and Rio dragon. doing the dragon. It's spotted by Rocket, but all the vision in the world doesn't matter if you can't act on it. Yeah, poor item time. Uh, from the bot lane, didn't really translate their advantage. Uh, yeah, they had a gold advantage, but didn't translate into a lead on the bot lane. Bam Scepter farms perfectly fine into pickaxe. You know, really good, good job by Kissing. I, I, I assume he used his tormented soil to stop the backs uh, from the rocket bot lane. They will have to be scared once they actually finish that back, but right now they can, they can play passive on the bottom side of the map because they got the objective, they got the dragon. They basically just want to secure those towers, keep them alive, and let Oduamna beat up Steve for a while. Yeah, and he runs right. Q. So uh, Steve is definitely, I think beat up is the word to describe it right now. This is a bit of a problem for him. We'll see if any help comes from him. In the meanwhile, Yankos is focusing on Nuke Duck's lane as he backs away after the wave has been pushed in. Lulex clearing out some vision on the other side here. Yankos is getting out leveled by Lulex pretty significantly. He looks continuously been a level up on Yankos. Yankos even forced to like walk into lanes to assist with wave clearing. Really not good if you have to do that as a jungler because the, the best thing about being a jungler is that you can show up any lane and gank, right? But if you give the information where you are to a team as organized as H2K, they will punish you that. Not in the spot where you are, but somewhere else on the map, they will use that to their advantage. And you see Odoana taking down the first tower of the game on the top lane. 
Yep, he grabs that one for free as Steve was forced to back away. Let's go back to the bot lane for a second because Woolite is putting some serious hurt onto Kasing. Gets stopped by the binding, but they for haven't now they're based dominant. yet. Woolite snuck a base. That's really smart. He snuck a base, and now Hyunin and Kasing they have to get the hell out of there. They have to get the base, get some items, or otherwise Woolite will just straight up beat them up, and they have to hurry, or they'll just straight up lose their bottom tower here. Really significant point in the game. Is Woolite going to take down his tower? Yeah. Well, they're just backing now. This is not looking good for H2K's bottom first tier turret. The mini wave is inbound. Yankos and Nuke Duck are moving in that general direction as well. Kasing actually stuck around, but he can't do anything here. And now Yankos is providing a buffer against Lulex. This tower is as good as dead. Yeah, solid rotation of play from Rocket. They recognize that they really needed that tower to even out the tower score. And they basically supplement their, their advantage by moving other pieces on the map over. Really, really good use of resources. Yeah, with that, they bring the gold within 200. 13 minutes is the time on the clock. There's only been one dragon, and it's been for H2K. But Rocket still holds on. Well, no lead actually for them. But, you know, they're very, very close. Hyarna has to be careful. BF Big X into a Cutlass is almost is the the worst part of this matchup if it ever happens that you could be in. Uh, at least if you finish your Blade of the Ruined King, you have an active proc. If you get some more damage like a BF sword yourself, you, act, you, know, you can actually win some trades if you're lucky. But this is really awkward spot to be in. Yeah, I mean, there's no way he can trade with Woolite right now. I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, once he, he finishes pushing down bot, assuming Rocket uh, decide not to defend this one, if they try to push somewhere else on the map, if he then, you know, goes and hangs around mid, goes and hangs around top and tries to turn things around. That's a really good pointer, because if we go back to how we handled the champ select, we noted, like, we noted that H2K is very weak in the wake uh, in the wave clear front, and Lucian can really expose that. Cowling to poke somebody out of the tower and then take down a tower. Rocket should start looking at taking more and more towers while keeping the bottom one alive. I don't think putting two people bot is the correct play for them. I would like to see them collapse on mid lane, use the fact that FaZe barely has any wave clear, use the bottom at lane advantage, and translate it like Forgiven did earlier in the Gambit game. Mm -hmm. And you can see that Rocket are definitely hoping for this game to go on as long as possible. To Tier app has been sitting on the Cassiopeia for a while, but the Abyssal Scepter completed as the first item. What do you what do you think of that particular build? I think it's all right. If you're playing as a Mage Assassin, but Steve's getting caught again. Yes, he is. He could go 0-3 as he goes in with the Onslaught or goes out with the Onslaught. It won't be far enough as Oda Wamne picks him up. Didn't even need to dive, just found him on the crust. Yeah, H2K recognizes that they have to start playing towards the strong side. He's seeing a balanced bot lane, knows that they will lose 2v2 anyways, predicts a possible roam into mid, and they start playing around the strong side. Play around Oduwama, don't need his TP, you know, make him the crux of the team right now, and it works out, they get a pick. They get another one. Yanko's forced to spend his explosive cast just to push them off of this one. Now you've got the waves pushing once again Rockets way down bottom. Yarnin forced to farm up his Krugs just to try and keep relevant. This is not looking good for H2K. Yeah, what did Rocket do in the last two or three minutes with their bot lane? Vander and Wulite pushed up, got to the tier 2 tower, did some damage in it, then decided to back off. They lost the momentum. Tempo is a really integral part of League of Legends right now, and Rocket lost a lot of tempo while H2K gained some, and this is really, really crucial for the, the state of the, the game right now. Yeah, I mean, they're focusing on uh, a lot of their attention on Steve, and that's definitely working out well for them. They're so literally Rocket, that Rocket are doing, yeah, exactly. Rocket are doing fantastic on bottom, but you're right, there's not a whole lot else going for them right now. And that's the issue. Yeah, but Steve's at the point where it's not worth killing him anymore, 0-3. So they basically just want to put him in awkward spots where he has to push out lanes and move all the Wamne, move that strong piece to another side of the map. We might see some TPs coming in. Yeah, we might see some Rek'Sai ultimates as well, because Sing knows he has some backup, and there is an Oda Wamne coming in. Fate's call from Yarn, and they're looking for an extended engage. He throws Kasing in. Glitterlands goes, but Yankos is the target as they put the wild growth on him. Will it be enough? No! The spears get ripped out of him, and here comes Oda Wamne. Yarnin picks up Vander. Steve, talk about a dead horse, 0-4 on the scoreboard, and H2K pick themselves up three for none. And look at the timing in the game, 10 to 20 minutes. This is where H2K puts on the fire. They use the, their playstyle to their advantage, and somehow they come out on top again. Beautiful chains you see on Yankos. Ruex flashing for the knockup. They don't want Yankos to move anywhere, because once you eliminate the tank, Rocket has no tank in his left at all, and a really beautiful ulti from Oduwamne, and their resource management has been beautiful. They play passive on the sites where they have to, they play they, they capitalize on advantages where they can, and it all culminates in three kills and a tower for H2K, and they're now 4,000 gold almost ahead. Uh, and it might even be another tower to take a look. But let's take a look at how this fight went down. First off, starts with a bait from Kasing. Yeah, basically, Kasing baits them in. Teleport comes in here from Oduwamne. Face call is used for the knockup into the bind, into the... Watch Lulex. Flash knockup again. They basically call Yankos, Yankos, Yankos. He's dead. 
Fizz is coming in from the side, flanking really good two-man ulti because they're basically watching their tank die. They're just standing around. Is he gonna die? Okay, okay, is it? Oh, oh god, we're caught out. We gotta run. And then Hodwana pins them into the wall, double stun. Really good play. And Rocket almost seems flabbergasted though. What's going on? Yeah, definitely not quite in sync. And unfortunately for Steve, he's definitely had a rough start of things. Now Rocket are going to attempt this Drake, but H2K will not give it up so easily. We'll see if they go in. No steals. That one does go to Rocket. Ooh, I got it breathe though. a sign of the relief. Yeah, Woolad had to get that. So with two smites. AD carry takes it. Uh, Itsuki not being punished for the lack of wave clear, and they found the weakness in, in, in Rocket's armor in Steve having no flash. I find it still peculiar that a Fist can roam up top, dive, and not get punished, not lose his tower at all. And it's just really solid play, and I'm really, really impressed that, Rock, uh, that H2K managed to recognize that. It seems really obvious in hindsight, you know. Yeah, he has no flash. Okay, you can push him, you can dive him, but to do that in a game at, on LCS stage is, is very, very impressive. Oh, yes, indeed. So. With all of that, H2K has certainly pulled ahead in this game. They find themselves 3,000 gold up. The dragons are even, but the kills are all H2K. 6-0 to zero is that score line. In just a couple of minutes, Baron starts to hit the field. We'll see if that becomes an object. But for now, looks like H2K are eyeballing this bottom side. Woolite dodges out a dark bind, but Yarnin and Lulex are there with Kasing to keep on the pressure. They're basically faking a dive because they don't. They know they don't have teleport, so they basically want Oduwama to take down top tier 2 while they're safely pushing down bottom. Uh, Rocket might recognize this and try and take out Oduwama himself, but then they'll lose the bottom tower to a dive anyways. Really tough position for Rocket to be in if H2K, H2K has the proper vision to recognize this play. Yep. Oh, and there goes the Casio ult. Steve goes in, and Oduwamne just out of Meganar form is going to go down. Nuke Duck will pick up his first kill of the game. I like it was it. a little bit messy, and they trade for a turret, though. Yeah, but I think one third, either top tower tier two was going to fall or bottom tier one. They traded for a kill. I think that's the best case scenario for Rocket. I, I like the roam. I think it's a smart play. And what does it say about uh, Rocket, though, that, that this is the situation that they're in, that they have to basically make sacrifices regardless of what they're doing at this yeah. stage of the game? This is basically mistakes from the past coming to bite you in the future. And here goes the Yarn Fates call onto... Yep, he gets Nuke knocked Duck. up onto Nuke Duck. They combo it, and they throw the chum in the waters, and that is one dead snake. Ryu pops his on his hourglass as Yankos goes in, goes out. Is he big enough? No, not again. Yeah, especially if you if you lack wave clear, you really need to make these picks happen. And H2K is so good, no hesitation, just throwing Kasing in there, relying on him, knocking people up, and then comboing it with the bind into another knockup. You know, so much damage coming out. Good bind from Kasing. Yep. Now they found Steve. Tormented Soil is on Ryu. Playfuls and Tricksters, and he gets a kill on a spree now as the minions are still tanking the tower. Yarn and Hop skipping and jumping all the way to a few more tower shots, and H2K are able to clean up three kills in total off of that. Five thousand gold lead. Oh, yeah. really impressive. Starting to roll out of control. Rocket, what can they do to come back from this one, though? Because they just seem to be very scattered. Some good answer moves, but not without giving things up. I think the only way they can win a fight right now is a good flank from Hecarim. Uh, while this tower is going down, uh, maybe Caspia are flashing just the multiple people, but H2K seems to be so controlled that they're not going to let that happen, you know? Oh, and, they, and they wait. It looks like it may have been a little bit long, but they really, what, what, the, what threat did they have to answer for? Uh, Steve was not quite up yet. His teleport isn't available either. Still a few death timers were ticking when H2K backed away. They had just enough time. And even if he teleports, I believe he went, yeah, he went for the Cinder Hulk into, into the makings of a, of a Banshees or, or potentially a Spirit of his Arch. You know, he's, he's not going to deal any damage. Zero five horse. They don't even have to be afraid of the, the flank anymore from Steve because he doesn't have the traditional Triforce to dish out so much damage. They can pretty much ignore him at this point and focus on the other carries. Basically, they just want to blow up Nuke Duck. Yeah. Uh, let's take stock of where this game is at, because we, we talked about the 10 20 minute power spike that H2K has. In, in this game, they've certainly hit it to a T. At 10 minutes into the game, it was incredibly even. It was uh, very much tie game in almost all aspects, maybe a few towers and a few dragons here or there. Now, we've got ourselves 5,000 gold difference, like you said. Still 1 to 1 in dragons, but that kill score pretty much says it 9 to 1. H2K have been finding the holes in Rocket strategy and exploiting them time and time again. So what they want to do now is put Oduwana on bot with teleport and then control the top side of the map. They want to get rid of those pink wards that Rocket has in their jungle right now. Put Deep Vision and I think H2K will do that. Because the, the lack of, of wave clear, not, not the best siege in the world, they might just want to start baiting uh, Rocket into face checking. Face checking gets punished really hard, especially when you have a Rek'Sai with Tremor Sense. She can spot out people moving in the dark really easily, especially when they move towards an objective. Could be really, really, really dangerous for Rocket here. Yeah, could be dangerous for Rio, however, though. Finds a Yankos in the brush. 
promptly body slams into him, but they're going to go ahead and give up a pink ward for that one. H2K continuing to squeeze Rocket out of their own jungle. Now Steve finding Oda Wamne, but as you said, he really doesn't do any damage. He's got to be careful, too. Meganar's not anywhere near happening, but he doesn't need it. Oda Wamne just puts on the damage. Yeah, the new Black Cleaver really working into uh, Oda Wamne's favor here, and Steve doesn't want to teleport in the fights anymore. He just wants to cancel Oda Wamne. He wants H2K to face off 4v4 against Rocket, potentially lose the fight with a good Nuketox ult flash, but even then, you know, he's just getting wheeled down because he has to stay in range to cancel the teleport. And uh, Rocket's trying to gank Odawanma here. Yep, up, oh, flash for a flash right there. Explosive cast. Odawanma is dangerously close to Meganar, yeah. though. And Steve might have overstepped Don't his bounds. Now you see Yankos bailing out a barrel to help Steve. But it's all they can do to stay alive in a 1v2. Ryu diving onto Woolite. Does he have the damage? He does. Because Thing is there. He's got his ultimate on. And a pair of exhausts. One for Ryu, one for Vander. H2K turns no, me down. They're going for the dive. There's the petrifying gaze, but it only slows down. H2K for just a moment. They're piling on forward and eyeballing the inhibitor turrets. And this is H2K in a nutshell. You know, you try to aggress us on us in the bot lane, we will find a way to kill you in the top lane. Cross map objectives. Really the bread and butter of an objective based team like H2K. And walls seem to be optional for Kissing. You know, there's a wall here. Just use Fate Skull. Throw me over. I'll just land a binding. T Playful Trickster, Zony has a lot of ways to reset power aggro by Ryu, masterfully used, and H2K is playing this game to a T. 10 to 1 in kills. Rockets, they're not getting anything. No, they're not being allowed anything here. Now Dragon coming up in 10 seconds, but Rocket, they've got very little way to contest this. There's a tiny, tiny window with everyone just coming back from base, but do they even want to risk it at this point? It doesn't look like that's the case. Uh, again, what Rocket wants to do right now is keep Oroana out of these fights, have Steve cancel his teleport ideally, and somehow win a 4v4, but no flash on Nuke Duck, no flash on Woolite, no flash on Vander, no flash on Vankos. That makes un like that makes your plays very, very predictable, and H2K is looking top form right here. Absolutely, look to secure themselves. Dragon number two at just about under 24 minutes into the game. They've got their bases covered, that is for sure. But on Rocket's side, you know, what really, they, they've had their options really whittled down. The Hecarim is pretty much irrelevant. Uh, they've been forced into these predictive plays, as you said. Really, it seems like it's going to all be on the back of Nuke Duck the longer this game goes to have that Cassiopeia damage, but that's still a long ways away. He's still on basic boots. Yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely struggling. He has a lot of DPS, but he has no ways to land it. The mobility coming out of, out of Rio, and, and he can be untargetable for so many times in a row that it, it's really tricky to kill him. Lulex is always ready with a flash uh, on the trigger, you know, to flash knock up and basically CC chain people down. Uh, really good play from Yarnero, nice spacing, uh, good ultimates too. So H2K playing pretty much flawless and they're, they're capitalizing on what they did in the early mid game. And if we go back, we just want to highlight, you know, how well they played their composition, how well they, they knew their strengths and how they exploited Rocket's weaknesses. And I think if we want to analyze this game, one thing that went wrong is, is the item timings on bot lane. When you're 30 CS up, you really want to capitalize that somehow. Playing pickaxe into vamp and then being, being being kept, you know, until you base on maybe 110 CS, it is. It was too much for Rocket. Solid uh, props to H2K for staying in the game, though. Yeah, absolutely, and and just outmaneuvering time and time again. It just seems like the biggest story is, is, is execution. Both these teams had solid compositions. They knew what they wanted to do, but H2K knew exactly how to shut down the Rocket plan. And it looks like uh, H2K is like putting up vision, deep red jungle, so they have the teleport threat to punish Rocket if they check. Oh, but Ryu's Ryu. going in. Yeah, he's got Chum the Waters onto Woolite, and he's going to get eight. Just like that, Ryu's going to pick that one up, and he dodges out. So does Zonyas, too. From the Petrifying Gaze. Yeah, he'll be able to play for Trickster once again. Nuketuck just cannot catch him. Again, still those basic boots. Yeah, and Slippery you fish, you even see, harder to find. You see what Ryu does. Like He forces the gap closer to be used by Woolite, knows he has no flash, guarantees the ultimate landing, and at that point, Woolite is a sitting duck, and... and, and you know, he will just get eight alive by Fizz, and there's no reaction in time by Rocket because H2K is spreading them out. They want to. Rocket's one of those teams that definitely wants to 4v4 in, in this comp, but they're not allowing it to happen. H2K, flawless execution so far. Flawless execution indeed. After pushing that one, Rio will go back, spend more of his hard earned gold. 402, his score this game has been absolutely phenomenal and untouchable. Yep. On the bot lane now, Otawamne. And Gafaina pushing at the bottom, seeing if he can bait out Steve. Sweep on the Baron to see if Rocket would be aware of this. But they know with three members there that something has got to be up. Ryu rushing to get back to this one. 
Yeah, H2K not getting too greedy. They just want to secure visions or, or wards in every single brush here so they can see Rocket's moves and take the save Baron because they don't have a timer, right? Because Odo Omni will beat up Steve 1v1. If Rocket commits more resources to the bot lane, the, the Baron will automatically become free. So time just plays into H2K's hand perfectly here. Eventually, it'll be enough wards or Tremescence will be secure enough that they can take the Baron and start closing out this game. As you say it, so let it be true, Crepo. H2K start this Baron off. Team Rocket inbound trying to stop this from happening, but Yankos wanders right into a chum the waters and he throws a barrel out trying to escape now. Teleport from Oda Wamne gets stunned up. Lulex takes a huge shot of Coling, but Woolite and Nuke Duck are next on the table. Oda Wamne, Meganar just at the right time. It's a double kill for Yarnin. Steve now collapsed on by the rest of H2K. That's a triple kill for the Callista. They can take this Baron for free. The question is, do they still want it? Oh, yes. And oh, there's, yes. There's, there's nothing Rocket could do, really. Like, they were forced into that play. They had to check the Baron. They had to fight their way out. Odo I would have found a way to teleport away from Steve so that Steve couldn't cancel it. The second that lands, it's almost guaranteed that oh, that Rocket uh, oh. H2K is going to win this fight. Baron, okay. Because Sing volunteers his tribute. Yeah, you know, why not, right? An O to the so Baron has Vander killed as healing. many H2K members as Rocket has this game. Go Baron. Yeah. Vander trying to be a nuisance, but he just can't do enough. In the end, it's secured when you've got that many spears stacked into you. Yarning can rip him out for a lot of damage. So, and this, we said it earlier in, in Elements' game, you know, this, this, they had a really, really group one mode combo team fight style uh, type of deal with no wave clear. Baron solves that problem in a siege. Now, H2K has a bit of a different composition. They want to 1 3 1 and make picks. Baron amplifies that so much because now every single lane will get the Baron buffs, you know, because Kassing is not going to split push on his own, so it doesn't matter that he lost his buff. A little unfortunate that he died there, but H2K can set up for a 1 3 1, a 4 1, buff all the creeps. Exactly, I was going to say they have, they have a whole ton of options at this point, uh, and they can just continue to push Rocket further and further back into their own base. I mean, they're already sitting on only one tower outside of the base remaining, but let's see if Thank Rocket can find something. He's going to be slowed down as he tries to tunnel, forced to flash away. Yarnin now in there for the defense, but Rocket, they've got a momentary advantage. In comes Steve, and Nuke Duck will pick up a kill. Yarnin is next on the plate, and that's going to be Steve picking up his first. Rocket have found a tiny bit of breathing room. And this is how you stop a 1-3-1. You kill before it happens because once all everybody's in position pushing lanes, it's too late because if you commit to one side, they will take a cross-map objective. Really good read by Rocket. They hide in the jungle knowing that somebody is going to want to trigger vision and they kill. But Ryu, he wants blood. Yeah, look at how confident H2K are. Two members down. They still think they can make a play. Ryu flashes, but Vander follows suit on this one. Oda now chasing on look Steve as he hop skips nice and jumps over. Woolite. No, Woolite is down as Ryu chases through him and Oda Wamne find Steve, H2K in a member disadvantage, are able to still come up with two picks. Yeah, this highlights the state of the game, how far H2K is ahead. Ryu, he doesn't care that Team Ages died, you know? So nice, you took the cooldowns, I'll take care of the rest. Yeah, no problems for them whatsoever. Now forget the split push because H2K are right on the inhibitor turrets. No need now with Woolite and Steve down. Chum the water's dodged out, but it doesn't even matter. They just used it to zone as this inhibitor is not long for the rift. Oda Wamne jumping forward. Nuke Duck is found. He's not going to get anything with his petrifying gaze and a cherry on top for H2K as they push Team Rocket even farther back. Yeah, fantastic play here, and it almost insurmountable lead for uh, for H2K, and they push, they're going to end this game. I imagine on a 4-1 split push, they can also start knocking on the front door on any of the lanes, but uh, they can pick up another dragon here, uncontested. Rockat is down more than 10,000 gold at this point in the game. That is so hard to deal with, almost impossible, I would say. Yeah, now Dragon number three going down for H2K. There's no way that Rocket can get there to try and stop it. They've lost all control of the map. With extra mobility now from this third Dragon buff, H2K will be even slippier, even harder to catch. And Rocket are almost out of options. Yeah, H2K not going to make the same mistake again. Here on basing safely. We just saw a trade for Dragon for double golems. <laughs> Slightly in H2K's favor here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Three kills for Rocket. We see a lot of one-sided games today. A lot, of, a lot of teams that you know snowball their advantage without giving away too many deaths, and that's what we highlight at the start of the show, where we show these fancy graphics we made. People who give away less deaths and try to get you know a decent amount of kills, they win game. It sounds logical, mm -hmm. of course it does, but you know we see H2K basically play this style to a T, and they're finally losing maybe one tower in the top lane, but I don't think they care too much. Well, it's a style that got them third place in the European LCS, and it looks like it's about to get them a win if this trend continues. <laughs> Oda Wamne no goes in a little far by himself, but he's just perfectly fine. He's eating a full culling. 
and all of Rocket are still backing away from it. The rest of H2K are pushing bot now. Yeah, that's a 1v1, you know, you force them to overextend on one side relatively safely, maybe a little too bold by Otto Amna there, but he delays their back timing so much that H2K uh, can maybe get a tower on the bot lane. Wu Lights 1v1ing him. He is 1v1ing, but Odo one they outplays him! How about that? A Thornmail will do that for you. On top of the random wins, Omen pretty much negated a lot of Wu Lights damage. Inhibitor now in the bottom being fired down by H2K. They've just got everything in the book against this team. This has to feel so bad. Beat 30 CS up early, and then you get death by Thornmail in the end of the game. Really, really not fun for Wu here. Uh, played a good laning phase, though. Really good reactionary play there. But it just didn't come together for Rocket. No, it really just didn't. So, and this is why we're at 32 minutes into the game, and, and H2K are just continually knocking on the doors. So they've got two inhibitors. They've got Odawamne bringing up a herd of minions here as Yarn and Kasing and Lulex are there. Yankos, all he can do to try to back this out is throw a couple of barrels here and there. Nuke Duck's still a damage threat, but they've got to land the perfect combo, and that's really only happened once. Yeah, H2K horribly uh, are really efficient about it with their Baron, right? They took it down, and six minutes later, they only have two inips down, took a tier 2-2. Two, two. They're, they're knocking on the, on the base. Nexus turrets, they're taking out a third. Rocket, just, they're, 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 they're not swimming anymore, you know? They're sinking. No. Absolutely. Steve is uh, just able to get away from that Dark Binding, but Tower won't be so lucky, it's gonna take the rest of its HP in damage. Chum the water, dodge out, here. but they are going to go in for the final assault. Steve dodges in, but I don't think it's gonna help the rest of his team. Wolai takes down Lulax, in comes Ryu, just dodging around, but he finally will fall down. That's a double kill over to Wolai before he himself melts. Vander chased all the way back to his fountain as H2K completely clean house, and they will secure the ace. Team Rocket blasting off again as H2K are polishing off the Nexus turrets. They will end this game 33 minutes in. The Nexus is bare and a fantastic match for H2K as they just take their time around it, dancing about to finish this one off in serious style. Got a challenge for giving on CS, pad the score a little bit, but yeah, H2K, very convincing. What a way to start off the split. For both teams, really. And, you know, Rocket, they, they definitely made some changes. We saw them doing some very positive things early on in the game, but you're right, it just didn't come together for them. For H2K, the tried and true worked out once again. Yeah, we just, I think I think what really sums up this game is the opening that Rio found on the level three roam to top. I'm not sure if that's supposed to happen in the Fizz Cassiopeia matchup. She should have, as a control mage, enough control to at least keep the wave even, highlight that the roam is possibly to happen, or Yankos can defend the Hecarim without the flash. Questionable TP smite too. Maybe he should have just opted for a flash to be safe. First game in the LCS, you know, you know people are gonna pick on you. No flash invites you to get dope. And yeah, I just I wanna really commend Rio on finding an opening because I think that really sealed the deal. We have to remember their bot lane was down 30 CS. A little awkward bot lane buy timings that uh, kept that in the game. And that, that just shows you know how smart uh Kasing and Garnon are as a duo bot lane. One of the, if not the best bot lane in the LCS right now. No, I certainly made a statement for it today. And Rocket still got some work to do, I think. That is uh, more than fair to say on the, yeah. uh, on the other side. They, they definitely had a fantastic bot lane. I think they got a little baited in picks and bans. This is this was H2K mind games a little bit. So you're probably talking to the rest of the team. I mean, obviously very happy with that performance to open this one up. I wonder how this game would have turned out if the, if the Golem XP went on the, on the right targets there. I'm not, not sure if it actually was planned or not. It seems like it was an unlucky loss pool tick that uh, they got it away while Kjarn usually AD carry stand on max range to take that Golem, share it, you know, to get closer to lane. I'd have to ask Ray later if I see him, uh, but yeah, good recovery, good exploit though from Rocket. I, I like to see that, you know, you have the information when people show up at certain timings, they hit certain level marks, an experienced bot lane player will recognize that once that banding was down. Really nice uh, engage there from Wu, I have to comment on that. So that's nice to see, but in the end, you know, H2K's pride, you know, like, Control heavy, objective based focus style, nice crop ma cross map objectives, good placement of resources. It's all it's all play. Yeah, all around it. It's very hard to find something to really critique about that style. There were a few mistakes made, as you mentioned. Uh, some minor stuff, but the recovery was good. Overall, every lane really stepped up. Yep. Oda Wamne, I mean, he absolutely schooled Steve. I mean, how's that for a welcome to the LCS? Yeah. He had a little help from Ryu, admittedly, but still. Yeah, well, still, Oda Wamne played it great. The new Black Cleaver working very oh, yeah. well on his Gnar, and he just beat up that horse over and over again. Steve ended the game. Let's see. Over there, my screen's black. <laughs> How many deaths did he uh, have? One, eight, and two. Eight, one yeah. eight and two. Yeah. He just never got allowed. He was never allowed to get off to the races. I mean, that was First the biggest game problem. First game in LCS, so. so that's rough. I hope he bounces back from, you know, Rocket has plenty of games mm -hmm. to come back, you know. If they want to make it to Worlds, if, that if that's their goal, all they have to do is 
get to playoffs and then rocket there. So they have time, but yeah, they'll need to improve in a bit. Yeah, but there's plenty of time to do it too. I mean, again, they, they themselves said they had very high expectations for themselves, even if, uh, you know, a lot of people don't expect them to be at that level. Uh, Vander said, I believe, in the promotion tournament. I think we can definitely be top three. Well, you know, it's time to show it. It's going to be a while before we see if that's going to happen or not. But, you know, I mean, they have that wants burden. To be top I, th three. I think they have that burden off their shoulders from uh, everyone else, at least, right now. So we'll see if that maybe helps them a little bit. Yeah, definitely. The community doesn't expect them to do well anymore, given their uh, rather atrocious first split. Uh, they have faith. I like that they have faith in their players still that they decided to keep White in that extent, you know, because it, it shows, you know, we, we, we trust you, White. We want you to perform. We know you have it in you. Let's see if you can show it. And he showed fragments of it. I don't think he got hit by the signature, you know, who White gets caught again. You know, he won he got hit by a bind once, but that was out of the out of the blue, out of the darkness. Once they were already losing the game, really good 2v2 performance uh, so far. But H2K, on the other hand, they seem to be getting better and better at their style. Well, I think UOL perceived hit the ceiling a little bit, I thought. H2K seems to be growing and growing more and more and more, and they seem to be meshing really well together. And I like the way they play these fights, the way they c control the CC one by one by one, one target down, then switch to the others. Oduwamne, fantastic Narils. Absolutely, and you know they really just showed uh, their experience and, and their control style, and it just didn't allow Rocket to really get anything else. But we're going to go ahead and head to the analyst test for an expert eye on that match. Why don't you guys go ahead 